going on? What's going on, everybody? It's the Big Dog Podcast, and I'm Josh Wilson. Got Jay Mack in the studio. What up? What up? What's going on, man? Nothing much. Just hanging out. I feel like it's been a minute or two, but I guess we were in here, what, two weeks ago? Uh, been two weeks now? Has it been since the tracking seminar? Last we did time one we were right in the before. studio, oh, it was Nick, which dropped today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it's been two weeks. Seems like a lot longer. For sure. Um, so the last two weeks have been crazy. So we've had a bunch of people in town that we've been hosting. Um, we had Nick White, who's the founder of of Off Leash Canine Training, who you guys got to hear from um, a couple weeks back. Um, he was in town. We hosted a seminar for Steve Stoops, which is one of the greatest minds of the dog world. Um, we hosted a three-day seminar here at our headquarters in Yorktown. Uh, this bustling metropolis of Yorktown, Virginia. Uh, we had some serious people here, man. Yeah. Serious people with some serious dogs. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I had no idea that Nick was a host of the A&E show. What was it? America's next top dog. America's top dog. Top dog. You yeah. didn't know that? I had no idea. Oh, yes. He's on there with the pearly whites. Just grinning. Yeah. It makes sense. He it has was a good, TV though. voice. Very he does. He does. He, it, that was, that was a fun show. I hope everybody enjoyed um listen to that we'll probably start getting feedback on that show in the coming days so yeah definitely also a good time to let people know leave reviews let us know how we're doing oh for sure yeah share comment if you feel like we're doing a good job you know sharing it that's the best um the best thing for us really share it let people know what's up best mode of support and let us know what you want to hear yeah for sure so you know we had nick in town for the the working dog seminar and that was pretty cool so and we're going to get a couple of the guys that we met um during that seminar they're actually been coming in and doing the show we had uh will chesney uh canine handler seals um him and his dog cairo were on the bin laden raid and so he came in and spoke to us for a little bit and dropped off some books so we're gonna get him on the podcast uh steve stoops i'd love to get him in he was an awesome guy man that guy was killer um there were some real real incredible dog people here on site and the thing that was really cool about that was easily some of the top dog people in the world were here at the facility and the conversations were incredible. There was no ego, Jonathan. Like these people know their shit. There was no, you, you can't argue that you can hate on, you can disagree. with. It doesn't matter. Like at the end of the day, um, facts are facts. And it's a fact that the people that we had here incredible dog people, dog minds, human beings, etc. But no egos. Wow. No egos. The conversations that were had in that room over the that three day period were incredible. Some of the best and I, I was definitely the peon in the room. I I mean it's like, hey guys, anybody need some more uh soda? Right. Anybody, <laughs> anybody need a want me to go run to the Keurig for you? Yeah, you need a coffee? You know oh now we did have a mimosa bar. Everybody was a big fan of the mimosa bar at the working dog seminar. I don't think they've experienced that before, but you know, we had to, we had to show out. So yeah, got did it right. JW way. That's right. Only, only way to do it. Um, but man, the stuff we learned over those couple of days were just incredible. And and the working dog side is, a. I mean, I live in the pet world, right? And so the working dog side of things is very different. Um, I don't know a lot about, but I was able to learn a lot over those couple of days um, and the willingness to share the willingness to um, collaborate between the people in the room, um, sh- uh, trade experiences, troubleshoot issues. Maybe they're having with certain dogs, um, you know, talk about whether the dog they have is the right dog for the purpose and you know, what they might want to be looking for. It just was tremendous. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was such a, great collaboration of different people different backgrounds but the similar purpose to improve get better and be the best they can be yeah it's always nice when you get a group of like-minded people together whose goal is not necessarily for business but in this case it was for the betterment of certain dogs and to help people be better with dogs so there was no ego which was nice to see none it's like improving the ability of that dog the purpose of that dog um and everybody wanted to improve as a handler. So it was really, really incredible time. Silly amount of talent in the room. Um, really, really good time. So that wrapped up on, I guess, two Sundays ago. And then the following Monday morning, 
we had all of our Virginia team, uh, plus um, a couple, uh, a trainer from Milwaukee drove down and I was hosting the tracking seminar. So that ran, you know, that Monday through Friday. So we just wrapped that up last Friday. And that was incredible too. I don't know that I ever do anything back to back like that again, because I was completely toast. Wiped out. Oh, I was done. Saturday and Sunday, thank God for football. I really, and the kids had homecoming. So, you know, we got them, you know, squared away and chauffeured Kiki, and that was fun. But I feel like I was just in um, a coma for two days, just kind of zombie mode, following along, going through the motions. Um, I planned on taking Monday just as a, a mental health day. Yeah, you we know, all need them. Focused on Devin, and, you know, we, we ran – up to the northern neck, ran around a little bit, just spent some time together because I'd been going so hard for a couple weeks. Um, Tuesday, election day. All right. Good job, Virginia. And uh, <laughs> um, the kids were out of school. So we took Kiki and her little friend Kylie up to Charlottesville for the day. We we're going to look at the leaves. I mean, that's what people do, right? You drive to the mountains, look, mountain, look at leaves. You ever do that, Jonathan? No? Yeah, with a with a girlfriend or two. It's not necessarily <laughs> my type of activity. <laughs> we like if she wanted to. Yeah, if she wants go, to go, we'll go. We might go do that. So uh the girls wanted to go look at the leaves. And I'm any excuse to drive. I love to drive. So I'm like, let's go. Pouring down rain the whole time. Did you take one of the uh one of the vans? No, we took Lucius. Ah, nice. So it was I asked Kiki what car she wanted to take. She said Lucius. She gets in the back seat, she says the whole vibe. She has different programming based on what she having, wants it to be having known your daughter since like near an I, infant, I hearing know. her say a whole vibe, Look, just every day, every damn day, <laughs> every damn day, Jonathan. Uh, it's ridiculous, but we had a really fun time. Her little friend, Kylie, they've been best friends forever and, and it was cool. So, but the, the thing that's funny is I had an incredible time at both of those seminars, an absolute blast. I loved learning. At the working dog seminar, I love teaching during the tracking seminar. But it legitimately took me four days to recover. That was weird. That was really weird because usually like, if I had come in here Monday morning, I could have come in Monday. I could have come in Monday morning, executed, gotten work done, done whatever. I'm fairly confident, though, that our office team, our support team, would have hated my ass because I would have been unbearable. I was on one. But instead, Devin Ray took me on a little road trip. Just day trip, chilling. Great time. Tuesday, little road trip with Kiki. Happy, had fun, laughing, no stress. Came in yesterday, ready to take over the world. And I couldn't believe, though, that it took me four days to recover. This was nuts. And, and I was like, man, am I getting old? Am I just whatever? Then I realized... My big ass is chasing dogs around the woods and hiding from dogs for five days. It just wears you out. Yeah, and I also think that the seminar itself wasn't necessarily all designed around the dogs. It was around, like we say when we work with trainers, it's not about just training the dog. It's training people. You right. Know? So you yeah. were training people yeah. as well. Um, so I'm sure that took a lot out of you as well. Yeah, and I don't mind talking, but, I mean, clearly, but it, <laughs> I was worded out. It was, it was a little bit bananas. But I think people discount um, changing up their schedule a little bit and like sensing like, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this day. And we've alluded to, to stuff like this in the past. But like you have to give yourself permission. If you know you're not going to be great. And sometimes no one's ever 100%. I remember years ago I had an employee call out. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to take the day. Just not feeling 100%. I started laughing. Like, I don't think I've been 100% since like 2003, you know, and that might have been like a fleeting moment, like a day. <laughs> I was probably like 94. It's like, the, it's like the phone is never actually on 100% right. charge. I, 100%. It just threw me for such a loop. I was like, all right, you, you, you take that day. 100%. What does 100% look feel like? I don't know. I don't know. Um, at best, I was probably like low 90s, but it felt like 100 because that's so much stronger feeling than 80. Right. And so, you know, we learn to operate at whatever level we need to because high achievers are going to get stuff done, right? They're just going to figure it out. So feeling good, feeling bad doesn't matter. You still do what you got to do. But 
every once in a while, you got to recognize that you continuing to run, if you're at 50% of capacity, whether you're tired, whether you're unwell, um, whether you're injured, if you're an athlete, you know, if you're at 50% capacity and you keep on pressing, you don't take that time to heal, to re-energize, your 50% is going to become a 40%. Your 40% is to become a 30. Whereas if you call time out for a day or two, put yourself on the pup list, you know, you just needed a couple weeks. Now you're healed up. You tear an ACL and you keep going out there and running 40s. What? Probably going to tear the other ACL. Right. But now you blow an ACL in football, you're back what? How long are you out now with the ACL injury? Uh, depends on the position, but I'd say 8 to 12 months. Right? But what did it used to be 10 years ago? Career. Uh, yeah, career over. Done. But now if you rest, heal, train all the improvements we've made, you can be back making millions, doing what you need to do. It's the same thing with your work. You know, a lot of businesses, they give people, you know, you got your sick days, you got your vacation time, you have personal days. People blow this crap on the stupidest of things. Man, that personal day is when you just need to take a day. Yeah. Right? It's like if I go in here and Janet freaking looks at me sideways, I'm going to go bonkers. It's probably going to impact the rest of my my team. Mm-hmm. Probably going to impact maybe my ability to come back to work tomorrow if Janet looks at me that way one more time today. I'm going to take a day, get my mind right. So it's not a Janet issue. It's a you issue, right? If I'd come in here Monday, I'd have been killing everybody. Devin Ray, I got you. We're going to go handle it, right? And I think that's difficult for a lot of people to do, to take that mental health day, because we tie so much of our success and productivity into that daily schedule. Yes. Because a lot of people have trouble being productive without some sort of a schedule. And I think that it leads to us kind of qualifying things by quantity rather than quality. Like, not how not how well did I do today, but how much did I get done today? Right. And it just wears you down over yep. time. So you go from that 95, 90% that you usually operating at and you dip down to a 75, 70. And then the more that you keep putting off those days where you need a mental rest, yep. just gets lower and lower. Your, your fuse gets shorter. Agreed. So, you know, talking about that scheduling piece, because I think you bring up a really good point. What, um, what's my rule before 10 a.m.? Nobody bother JW. Nobody for nothing, right? Like if I need something, I'm going to come find you. Um, And I do that because I know from when I wake up, which is usually pretty early, till 10, I'm at my best. If it's an emergency, I'm going to need to be notified, and obviously I'm going to take care of it. But if I can get my time protected, the amount of things I can do by 10 a.m. allows me now to have the ability to fluctuate throughout the day to whatever the needs of my team may be, whatever things may arise, whatever fire may need to be pissed on. Like, but I have to protect before 10 a.m. because there's certain things each day that have to get done that I must do. I'm very fortunate to have a great team, including you. So like with this podcast, when we're done with this podcast, I won't think about it again until we sit down and meet next week. And you're like, hey, Here's a podcast. Here's some promo stuff I put together. Here are some pictures. Here's some clips. You know, this is where we're going to title it. This is the the description. We're going through that stuff together. Most of them, I'm just like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Now let's call it this instead. And we move on. I don't have to worry about the editing, post-production, all that back-end stuff. I don't have to worry about it because you execute it so well. So that's not something I have to have a huge amount of time committed to each week. The scheduling of our freaking million trainers across the locations. I don't have to worry about their calendars. I got somebody who's on their calendars and works with them on the scheduling and all of that stuff. So I don't have to worry about that. Shout out to the admin team. Admin team. I mean, Always. they're strong. I mean, it's, we can't do what we do without that team. The sales team, the scheduling, the customer service, all the, there's individuals who handle all that stuff. So I don't have to. But if I start getting involved in this and that and all these things are just allowing people to uh, wreck my schedule throughout the day, all day long, the things that I really need to be focusing on, recruiting, development, systems, processes, don't get done. And we stay stagnant. 
And we can't get better staying where we're at as an organization or individually. You have to work every day on something to get better, right? So you know, for me, it's like you've got to protect that schedule. Going back to Monday, Tuesday, I knew for me to protect my schedule and my productivity, I couldn't be in here Monday and Tuesday. And I'd have messed up everybody else's productivity too. Cause I'm just in here pissed off about things that really are inconsequential, but because I'm tired or I'm frustrated, um, it, just not in a good headspace. I'm gonna mess up everybody else's vibe. So I put myself in timeout. Yeah. And you got to do that. You've got, you've got to get to the point where you can recognize that and do that. That's not something I was great at when I was younger. It was just stop being a little bitch, Josh, like get it done. And it didn't matter how that impacted everybody else. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact I'm acting a sort of way. And Katie just pops in my office. You good? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, why? I already know. I always say, yeah, why? But I already know what's up. I must be on a tirade or something, you know, just wearing people out about stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of like my little trigger. We're like, hey, kind of check yourself, you know, see where you're at and see what's up. Yeah, and I think you raise a really good point about the the ethos of protecting your schedule because for a lot of people, they have trouble maintaining a schedule with those breaks for mental health because yeah. they do have so much to do. So it sounds like what you're saying is a good kind of compromise between that is to rather than try and organize mental health days once, twice per month, is right. protect your day-to-day. -day. Yeah, for like sure. certain hours of the day when they're just specifically for you and getting your mind right. Yeah, because I don't need... Like the Monday, Tuesday I took, I don't need very often. Yeah, it's not very free. I don't, I don't need it. I can just roll. But I feel like it's because most of the time I protect my time. And I know if I do that, I don't need to work 18 hours a day. I don't need to work 12 hours a day. Really, my responsibilities? I mean, I don't mean this arrogantly, but I could probably work four hours a day and be more effective than 99% of the people out there and get stuff done. But that's also, though, because we've got a solid-ass team that we've built is doing a lot of other things. But the things I need to do, if I gave it four dedicated hours, four to six, probably crush it. Crush it. In the perfect day. Not every day is perfect. Stuff happens. So that doesn't happen. Do some days require 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 hours of my attention? 100%. Does that bother me? Not at all. Short of my family, there's nothing I love to do more than work on the business. That's it. So that's easy for me. But I also know if I need a Monday and a Tuesday, I can take it. And I don't got to run that by anybody. I don't got to get permission for that. I take that day for me, but that day for me is really me taking that day for the organization. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how do you recommend people who don't necessarily have that liberty of like, hey, I can check out Monday, Tuesday? Um, how do you recommend that they either approach that subject of like protecting their time yeah. um, either with an employer or just, you know, in the course of their of their day? Yeah. So first, I think everybody does. Not everybody. The majority of people do have that liberty. Uh, if, they're, if they're an employee full-time, you know, they probably do have a combination of vacation time, sick days, and personal days. Those aren't things that are uncommon now, right? Or um, if they're not full-time, if they're part-time, you know, there's a, a good amount of flexibility most places. I mean, you have your schedule, but, like, you've got to plan ahead. We do that with our trainers who are contractors. Hey, guys, we need to know your availability. And we tell them, you probably every couple of weeks, every couple, like a, every eight weeks, build in a long weekend, build in something where you have no dogs. Just take a little break, hit a little reset button. You have to be disciplined though and be proactive with your planning. So if you know I've got 10 vacation days a year, five personal days, all right, well, that's three weeks. That's, that's 15 working days. That's three weeks. Maybe be a little more strategic around them. Maybe don't commit your two weeks of vacation around uh, a C-list friends events. Cause now you're like, man, I just, I don't feel like I've been able to, to rejuvenate myself this year. I just feel it's been grinding so hard. Well, 
did you take that time to rejuvenate yourself? If you work a job Monday through Friday and you're off on the weekends, are you partying 24 hours a day, Saturday and Sunday, and you're a wreck until the afternoon on Monday? So you're kind of starting to get your head back ready. Like you can't do that. Yeah. You got it. You have to be intentional with that time, you know, so that's how you can kind of apply it as far as the little breaks go. Right. And you do control that time. You mm -hmm. can build that in now in your day to day. Again, comes back to discipline. You know, now you, some jobs, look, if you're working a factory line and there's just freaking, you know, sneakers flying down the conveyor belt, you know, and you're doing that eight hours a day and you're the one slapping the sole on the bottom. I imagine machines do this now. I, I don't really know. Uh, no, it's just people in other countries. Shout out to Nike and their horrible business practices. Got to say it. <laughs> For, well, shout out to the people because these mugs are comfortable as hell. Uh, yeah, I'm like, wearing Nikes too. Like, this is really a comfortable shoe. So, I mean, respect to everybody involved. I mean, I, these are great. I gave up flip flops for these. These Air Maxes. I think that's what these are. Yeah, same. Air Max two seventy whatever. Man, I got them in white. I got a couple pairs of white because they get dirty, and you got to put the fresh ones on. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, seriously, I'm I'm out of the flops because I'm in the Nikes. So respect. So it's not a machine, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> in that particular scenario, uh, they probably don't have a lot of control of their day, right? But if you are in an office, if you are, um, you know, in real estate, you're a realtor, if you are, um, you know, maybe a, a, a contractor, it, you, there are moments and there are certain aspects of your time that you can control. If your day is just 300 miles an hour from the minute you show up until the minute you leave, I have a hard time buying into that that's the job's problem. Or that's the job's fault. I, I think it's probably more of a scenario where you're the type of individual who feels like everything is your problem to fix. It's not your problem, but it's your problem to fix. You know, that person who's got to be involved in everything, right? But then they also want to bitch about, you know, how busy they are. Or they want to bitch about how stressful things are. Or there aren't other people that can can handle it, right? Yeah, it's like the person, uh, I'm real familiar with this kind of scenario, like working in a restaurant. It's like the person who is always in the restaurant group message asking to pick up shifts and saying like, hey, I'll do this, I'll do this. Right. Is also almost always the person who is complaining that they are overworked. Right. Like, what sword are you falling on right now? Like, you know, what I, when, when they do this, are you a mark? Like, why are we, you're asking for these things, you know, and then it's almost like you're asking for more. You're taking on more just so you can turn around and complain about it. Those type of people, they, they you can't help them. Yeah, I mean, it's all about what you value, right? Because do you value the extra dollars or do you value at the same time your your personal health and well-being? And it is a, it is a balance that sure. you kind of have to find because yeah. to your point, having that discipline in your day-to-day -day life will help you protect what you value, which is ultimately your free time. So if you're disciplined in your day-to-day -day life, I feel like it allows you to make time for that free time. Well, yeah. I mean, when we decided to to go all in on, on off leash and the, the dogs, it was a time-based decision. I wanted to control my time. I did not envision expanding how we have and having the staff that we have being this size. That wasn't part of the vision back then. The vision was, I want to have ultimate control of my time. I would like to be at home when the kids leave for school. And most of the time, I'd like to be at home when they get home from school. Some days we went that, some days we don't. But it was, I controlled whether that happened or not. There's nobody telling me. There's no boss. I've got to, hey, can I do this? I'm the boss. I determine those things. Not everybody has that option, to your point. Mm -hmm. But to some regard, within whatever parameters they work, they do have more control than they'd like to believe. Yeah. And someone who's saying, oh, I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that, they're taking every shift. There are seasons of life where you got to do that. 
You've got to earn. You need extra money. You've got an unexpected medical bill that pops up. You've got car issue that what's going on. We've talked about before. Average American family might have a grand in savings. Oh, yeah. I mean, what what was I doing before you brought me on to start planning the podcast? What were you doing? I was washing dishes with the with the UVA degree. Yeah. I mean, I needed the money. You were running around the facility doing whatever I needed you know, you to do. You were hustling. And but that's what you do because you gotta you gotta make money to do whatever. But then you got, like you said, the people on the job pick up the shifts, pick up the shifts, and then they're killing everybody, complaining about stuff, or their friends so negative. It's like, hey man, are you fortunate to have the ability to pick up shifts? You're at a place that has work for you. You're taking them. It's not forced on you. You take it. Don't turn around and, and bitch about it. Mm-hmm. Like be thankful for the opportunity. Because if so, value your time as much as you value the money that you're working so much for, you know? Right. You know, or I'll see somebody who who is in that scenario and they're driving around with a car note, you know, six, seven hundred dollars. I'm like, what in the hell? You're paying six hundred dollars on a car. You're working at two different restaurants to pay the car note. And you're talking about all the time that you work, but then complaining about how much you work, but you gotta work to make that car note. I'd rather have my time than see a car that literally I just take from house to work and the work just barely pays for that car. Mm -hmm. That's so many people like, what are you flexing on? Yeah. And nothing. I mean, this is something that I just think about consistently that I could preach to people around my age is like, you're not owed or you don't deserve everything you know you can't have all the free time all the personal time also all the money also the nice car and the nice things like sometimes you have to put your nose to the grindstone to work for things and it's a sad reality but some people just want the personal time and to be paid more and to be able to work however much they want and make however much they want and that's really not a reality and that's something i had to learn (laughs) like over time like it took ages like 20 to what am i now like 24 yeah till now to realize that I just have to work. And if I want to protect my personal time, it might mean working less, but that also means less money. It's just a balance. Or you grind, grind long enough to build something that funds your time. Exactly. You know, and, and that we've had plenty of seasons over the last seven years, seven, eight years where I was not available for my family. I mean, if it was, if it was very serious and they needed me, of course I'm available, but the fam, my family sacrificed, a lot of things so that we could get to a point to where I could make that decision for that Monday, Tuesday. Right. But if I wanted to take Monday, Tuesday, every week, we, the business is going to suffer and maybe that's okay. Right. If Monday and Tuesdays had to become so important to me, like that's what I prioritized. Then that means I would have to be okay with the business taking a step back or, or, I put in the work to build a team that allows me to take the Monday, Tuesday, and we don't miss a beat because we're building a team that's so much stronger than me. It's not about me. It's about the business. It's about our staff. It's about our clients. It's about the dogs, right? Whether I'm here or not, hopefully at some point, doesn't matter. That's, that's when you know you, you, you built something. Mm -hmm. and And that's what we're working towards at the same time i know you speak about this often but i mean not many people saw the seven eight years that it took to get to the point where you could be able to take monday tuesday off so i think it's important to let people know like stop looking at other people and how much free time they have or it's like i see them working a nice job like happens to me all the time friends that just graduated from college working consulting jobs in like dc austin new york they're able to do that because they're working a job that they don't really like and they have that free time, but they're not going to tell you that they're working a job that they don't right. really like, no. you know? So they're living the dream in the city, man. Exactly. They're doing the deal. Exactly. Nobody wants to see it. <laughs> We're joking around about Lucius or whatever. You like, you take one of the vans, like it, these things didn't just happen. These things just didn't show up. Like we had to work, you know, we had, we had to work for them. We sacrificed, you know, for them. And to have the opportunities, whether it's time, whether it's a a thing, it doesn't matter. You just have to choose where it falls from a priority standpoint. 
you know, and it, it's just an interesting, um, it's an interesting dynamic where people want it all and that's okay. But you have to understand that all of it doesn't come at once. Yeah. And something is going to give. If we're in heavy growth and expansion mode, my free time is probably limited. If I'm big on my free time and personal time and stuff like that, growth is probably slowing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's where the processes and systems come in place. And, and as you know, a business owner, if you're listening, if you're still the person doing all the small little day to day things and you're not figuring out a way to um, replicate yourself or take the things off your plate that you're not good at, you'll never get to the part where your hard work allows you to, to gain time. Because if you can't remove yourself from that day, what, what are you doing? Like you can't take the day, you can't take the time. So many small business owners I know, I haven't taken a vacation in three years. And I'm not talking about like some big vacation or anything like that. I'm talking about just like a long weekend. Yeah. Like three years. Like, okay, I get that. I see that. But that's not sustainable. Where is the honor in, you know, dying at 65? And it's like, man, I worked every day for 40 years. Started his own business. Never took a day. Is that what you want to be known for? No, not at all. No. So build something that you can get away from. And it doesn't take a hit. Yeah. And I mean, it definitely takes time and sacrifices because I mean, I'm not sure if the audience knows this, but when we met and started our relationship, I was in what, fifth or sixth grade. Mm -hmm. You led my community group. Yep. And then you did that for about a year and a half, two years. And then you started the dog business. And I literally did not see this man for what, eight grade till like probably right before I left for college around there as the dog business was starting up. Yep. And then I come back from college and what's happened? whole staff, more people training dogs. You have Katie working admin. Yep. Um, and it definitely took sacrifice and it took you stopping some other personal commitments that you yep. had like to our youth group yep. to be able to do that. But the work was evident. And now we're what another two, three years in the future, we have an even larger staff and yep. you're able to take those days. So it really was like an, an eight year process. A hundred percent. Yeah. And with where we're trying to be, five years from now and 10 years from now with our goals, that that's going to be a big process. That's going to take a lot of effort and time. But the thing is, those managing those times, you have to, <laughs> if I want to get where we're trying to go over the next five to 10 years, I've got to be able to manage the month, the week and the day. All right. And we've talked about this lesson in the past. And I think it's an important one to touch on again. You cannot accomplish any of those things if you don't break it down. If I'm just focused on where I want us to be in five years and that's all I ever look at, then we won't get there. It's impossible. It's impossible because where I want us to be in five years is built upon tens of thousands of micro steps, really tiny little moments and decisions. And a whole lot of green in an Excel sheet. And a whole lot of green in an Excel sheet. It's true though, you know? And so my decision to take Monday, Tuesday, the micro step, a micro decision. And we will be further along tomorrow and Saturday at the end of this week than we would have been had my ass been in the office Monday and Tuesday because of that. And that's where you have to be disciplined. It all comes back to discipline, guys, and knowing what you need. And particularly for our entrepreneurs that listen, our, our business owners, um, our salespeople, the independent contractors, those of you that do have the benefit of controlling your time. Don't act like you don't have the benefit of controlling your time. You do. If you genuinely feel that you don't, you need to, to audit what you're going on, what you have going on. You need to audit your day. You need to audit your responsibilities. You need to audit your commitments to maybe you do have staff, maybe you don't. You need to audit those relationships. You need to audit your, your, your personal relationships. You need to audit your friendships. You need to audit your other obligations to, to move forward. You're talking about the, the student group, the youth group, you know, at church, you know, that I led with, with, with you and your classmates. I had to audit that. That sucked. I had fun beating you all up in basketball and stuff. It was a good time. 
<laughs> Leave it alone, Jonathan. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I really enjoyed that season, but I knew I couldn't do both. Because if I did both, I was going to suck for y'all. I was going to suck for the business and I was going to suck for my family. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes people in your immediate circle might not always see that you're making that sacrifice for a reason. Like as a sixth grade kid, I didn't necessarily, or I guess eighth grade, didn't understand yeah. being quote unquote audited. You know, I was like, right, yeah. my, my youth group leader's gone. Yeah, like, this freaking guy. He just dipped out. But I had a plan. I want to make sure, you know, you had a job if you needed one at some point. I was thinking about it then, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, that audit, that audit, and, you know, last week people heard Nick talk about the audit, um, you know, once a year, kind of audit that friends list. Like, who's, who's investing the, the right kind of energy, you know, into you and who's just draining you? And you kind of got to remove the people that, that are of that drain. It's the same thing. It applies to everything. It's not just people. It can apply to the obligations, circumstances, whatever. And remove the stuff that's keeping you away from, you know, the, your genuine purpose and what your goals are. So much of stress and um, anxiety comes from these unnecessary commitments we make for ourselves. I could have come up with a thousand reasons to be here Monday and Tuesday. I just needed to listen to the one good one to not be. I got shit to do. We're okay. And just because you got shit to do doesn't mean you have to do it in that moment. Um, are you doing things or are you getting stuff done? Exactly. There is a big ass difference. And if you focus on getting stuff done, the key tasks, everybody's got way more time than they like to say that they do. But people get hung up on saying how busy they are. Yeah, I think you know it's kind I mean? of it's like a it's like a token of social currency, you know. Yeah. If you're, it, I and think I'm busy. It it came from that whole like rise and grind type mindset. Like I never sure. sleep. I'm always working. I mean, and there's seasons for that. There's seasons, but that shouldn't be your state of being. No. Like I'm always busy. I don't want to be known for always being busy. I want to be known for having a lot of time and balling out with a lot of time. That's a serious flex. Like this guy, like he just he's doing all right. Seems relaxed. Can you imagine me relaxed? It's crazy. I'd love it. But you don't need to, you don't need to be busy. You need to be efficient. You need yeah. to be effective. Get stuff done. Find your freaking Monday, Tuesdays. Yeah, I think that was also the message of uh last week where it was Nick talking about just being efficient and consistent, you know? Oh, consistency is so key because, and okay, so great point. Um, he, I think he gave the reference of no one becomes known as, as like a great athlete because they had a good game, right? They have to transcend time. And it's like over and over and over and over and over again, elite performances to become known as a great. It wasn't just one moment, one play, one game. Like, okay, we, 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 we're the best dog trainers because we dropped a really cool video one time. The hell? No, I'm confident saying we're the best dog trainers in the area because that's what the market says. I'm saying that because that's what the market is telling us. Mm -hmm. That's what the reviews tell us. That's what the testimonials tell us. Eight years. No one was telling me that crap in year one, two, three. We had people telling me, thanks, you did a good job. But now, the team, the feedback the team gets, I say, man, they're, we're not great. They're pretty damn good, though. Mm -hmm. And they're working towards that. But they're working towards it every single day. We're about to go over 700 reviews on Google in Hampton Roads, which is so stupid. Um, it's stupid in a good way that that's consistency. Yeah. That's consistency. And I feel like a lot of people look at that like, Oh, not all of those reviews can be real. Trust me. 
all real reviews because we yeah. definitely are consistent with the ask. <laughs> right. Know? We're consistent yeah. with the we ask. We ask, and it, I feel like people don't ask for feedback because they're scared of it. Yeah. Like, I'm not <laughs> – if you don't put the work in, right, if you know you're a contractor and you're installing cabinets – and you know you did a shitty job installing cabinets on the house, are you going to ask for feedback? Are you going to ask for them to go on social media or Google and leave a review? No. You're getting your check and bouncing. Yep. Because you don't really want them to say. You're hoping they just move on. Crooked-ass cabinets, cups falling out. Can you imagine? They're not asking for it. People are scared to ask because they know they cut corners. I think that's why people don't ask for feedback. We're not scared to ask for it. I think Yelp has also intimidated some people. Yelp sucks. Terrible. Yelp can kiss my ass. I'll be honest with you. Like, Yelp is an absolute joke, and it's the biggest scam on the planet. Yeah, if you're the type of person that feels vindicated and self-important enough to go on the internet and leave, like, a two-paragraph review, like, other people are going to read it, and you're saving them. Well, we're, here's we're the thing. We're not friends. Here's the thing with Yelp that really screws a lot of business owners. So we we... We talked about this. We invest in advertising and marketing and stuff. Clearly, most businesses should. Shout out to Stan. Uh, that's right. Yelp, though, it's really funny. So Yelp, I think, shows maybe seven or eight reviews of ours. Um, I don't think it's a great rating on Yelp either. But then hidden, hidden, there's probably 300 to 350 reviews that they hide. Yeah, the overwhelming majority of which are four and five stars, I would imagine. Um, but they've got like two of the reviews they show that are like one stars aren't even clients of ours. Um, it and like you can't dispute. Now, here's the thing though: if I advertise with Yelp, if I paid money to Yelp to advertise, mm -hmm. guess what? My hundreds of reviews would magically pop up. Yeah, my rating would magically reflect the reality of those hundreds of reviews. But since I do not, they show this handful of reviews, most of which bogus, mm -hmm. and it has this joke of a rating. It, Yelp, is, Yelp is dead to me. People go on there. We don't promote it. We have a Yelp you know, page or whatever, but it's such a joke the way they do it. You know, people are like, oh, you delete reviews. You delete all your bad reviews. That's why you have 700, you know, five stars because you delete your bad ones. You can't delete reviews. Yeah, not with, I'm, can you do it with Yelp? You can't do it with Google My Business. No, you can't that. do it on Google. You can't delete them off Facebook. You can't hmm. delete them off of, people want to say, it's like, no, we're not deleting reviews. The team works really hard and gets a lot of good reviews. And because we do the work, we're not scared to ask for them. And for everybody out there who's, again, not making use of Google business, you definitely should be. And if you're doing the work and putting the time in and you know your product is exceptional, ask. Ask. Everybody will go leave a bad review. No one thinks on their own to go leave a positive review. Yeah. So you've got to ask. But if you're not asking, you're scared to ask, boom, you need to audit your processes and are you actually delivering a great product? Are you actually delivering a great service? Because the only reason you're scared to ask for feedback is if you're suspect, suspect with what you are delivering. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, for sure. Right? And so I'll ask. We ask all the time. We are not scared to ask. We are not scared to video document what we do and put it on YouTube for the world to see. Because we're confident in what we do. Mm -hmm. And it all goes back to that discipline. Because yep. what we do is not necessarily crafted just out of a sheer will to do it. You know, it takes time. Yeah, it takes time and of it. Getting, getting the right people who are willing to come in and do all the necessary steps to make sure we uphold the standard. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, you talked about, you know, quantity over quality. You know, or, uh, yeah, choosing well, quantity yeah. over quality versus what should always be is quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. You know, we... We could be way busier and way bigger, way bigger than we are. But we limit how many dogs a trainer will have because we know how much time a day takes for each dog. 
And also the size that we're at allows us to have things like those back-to-back seminars where people can get better because we do value getting better. For sure. We want to improve. So I don't know. It's, um, it's auditing that time. It is a focus and discipline. All right. If people have been chasing along with the G code, hopefully they're improving, mm-hmm. you know, on those things over the last couple of months. Um, and it's being efficient and not busy. You know, and when you know, if you're doing those things, the odds of needing the Monday, Tuesday should be rare. But if you're also doing those things, you'll probably have the opportunity to take that Monday, Tuesday when you really need it. Mm -hmm. And then get back to work, come back with a fire lit. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's where we're at. We're going to wrap it up. Guys, we appreciate you. Hopefully you found a couple nuggets out of the conversation today. Um, You know, leading up to the, podcast today we were in the studio and we were just running on politics and and whatnot so we decided to save you all from that yeah and Uh, blind football (laughs) (laughs) we'll we'll wrap it up we'll see you all next week yeah this has been the big dog podcast thanks jonathan